Blackmagic did it again. A new launch that is exciting at first blush, and then incredibly problematic and frustrating when you dig into it. The Pixis 6K was announced this week and created a huge stir online, but I have to say from the start, I was unimpressed and confused. The Pixis 6K will only shoot Blackmagic RAW no matter the resolution, frame rate, or codec. There is a way to get H.264 files, but it is only at a 1080 8-bit 420 proxy. Otherwise, you are always stuck in a raw file workflow. I, for one, do not need to be filming video testimonials or small local nonprofit promo videos in raw. Now, Blackmagic tries to claim that, quote, video codecs are far faster than raw, but image quality is degraded due to the limitations of 10-bit and 422 video filter, so fine image details are destroyed. And yes, that is technically true, but honestly, Canon and Sony and others have done a darn good job over the years giving us stunning image quality in these codecs that take hard pixel peeping to find any detail destruction. Their files are drastically smaller and easier to manage than what you would get out of the Pixis 6K. Now, if you go with the Blackmagic RAW tab on their website when looking at the Pixis and scroll down about halfway, you will find this super duper helpful interactive form that will calculate how much hard drive space you will need to shoot in the various RAW formats on the Pixis 6K. I like shooting in 30 frames per second, so I'm going to calculate this to my process. Hey, my channel, my preferences, okay? At its highest possible quality of 6K open gate constant quality Q0, one terabyte. Terra, 40 minutes. On the other end of the spectrum, at its lowest quality, the HD constant bitrate of 12 to 1 will get 30 hours. Remember, you can only capture RAW even in the HD resolution, so that's still only 30 hours of footage for one terabyte. Plus, you're stuck at an HD crop, which we'll get to next. Play around with this calculator, but realize that because you're stuck filming Blackmagic RAW, you are going to chew through hard drives like crazy, and that will be very expensive on your wallet and frustrating. Let's talk about the sensor. 6K full frame, incredible. Absolutely love that. Wish more cameras did it. What's the catch? Well, you can only utilize that full frame 6K sensor at the highest codecs. In other words, at best, you can get about three to four hours of footage per terabyte if you want to use the full 6K full frame sensor. All other resolutions crop into the sensor rather than downscaling the image, causing you to lose field of view. So if you want to save hard drive space, you are punching into your image losing the benefits of the full frame and losing your field of view. And pretty soon you find that you bought a camera with a full frame sensor and you never use the full frame sensor because you can't afford multi terabyte RAID hard drive systems. Again, Blackmagic has this super handy interactive guide to show you the results of cropping in on the sensor. Here's what you would get with the full frame of the sensor. Incredible, absolutely love it. But you only get 40 minutes to three hours of footage per terabyte. Want to save space? Great! This just got you a total of 2 to 8 hours per terabyte at 4K resolution. Need more space? Well, preserving the 16 by 9 aspect ratio we're all used to, you can get up to 29 hours of footage on one terabyte with this look, or at 1080, a full 30 hours per terabyte. But look at how much of your field of view you're losing to get 29 hours of footage. You're investing in a 6K full frame camera that is going to make you never want to use that sensor. Other cameras like the Canon C500 Mark II are also full frame 6K, but they downscale the image to give you 4K or 1080 HD. So you're still getting the full use of that full frame sensor, but it's squeezing that down into the smaller resolution rather than punching into the sensor to get the resolution. I'd much rather have a camera that does this than what the Pixis does. Sure, the C500 Mark II is about $7,500 used on eBay right now, and the Pixis is $3,000 but we'll talk about the price in a moment and actually these two cameras won't be far off from each other when it comes to price. Let's talk features and accessories. There's no internal ND on this camera. Why Blackmagic does this, I don't know. It took forever for the pocket cinema camera to finally get internal ND and now at the first iteration of a box style cinema camera, we're back to doing without internal ND. I use internal ND or ND on every scenario I find myself in, I'm using it right now. But the Pixis 6K doesn't have this, so you're gonna have to buy a matte box and ND filters or the screw-on filters in front of your lens. If you opt to do the screw-on filters, it's time consuming and you lose image quality and color quality if you go cheap. Kinda negates the purpose of this camera, so you'll have to spend five to $700 
to get a kind of ND that's going to preserve the colors that this camera can get. How about audio? I always shoot two channels of XLR using my shotgun and lavalier mics every single shoot. Well, bummer. This camera comes with one mini XLR port and a phone jack style microphone port. So you'll also need to invest in adapters if you're using XLR audio microphones. More expenses and more hassles when rigging this camera out. How about the LCD monitor? Blackmagic always delivers excellent size and quality LCD monitors with incredibly intuitive menus and touch screen functionality. And this camera is no exception, but it's permanently fixed to the side of the camera. So not helpful. Sure, on our multi-man crew, your AC or DP may want to be able to monitor from the side of the camera, but a solo operator like myself will not be able to do handheld or gimbal work and monitor using this monitor on the side of the camera. So you're, you're forced to have to invest in another monitor to mount to the top handle of the camera. Canon and Sony have long time avoided this with the way they've designed their monitors. And yes, most people still invest in a second monitor, but they're not forced to by the form factor design of the camera. There is no EVF on this camera, which I've grown to find essential on projects that I work on. So that's an additional expense. And while we're on the issue of expense, let's just talk about that $3,000 price tag, shall we? Yes, that looks incredible, but already we have determined that you will need an external monitor for the sake of staying within the Blackmagic ecosystem, we're gonna choose one of their recording monitors at six to $800. Then there's the EVF, which again, for staying within Blackmagic is $1,700. You're going to need a matte box and ND filters or screw on lens filters, not to corrupt the image quality and colors you just invested in by buying the Pixis. I'd recommend Freewell's K2 system as tested by Philip Bloom in his fantastic video on ND filters, which you can check out below. But that's gonna be five to $750 investment. Already, we've doubled the cost of the camera, and we're now at $6,000, not to mention the incredible cost of hard drives you will have to buy for nearly every project because of the mammoth file sizes coming out of this camera. You'll also need a computer with enough processing power to handle grading and editing these raw files in post because that's all you'll be able to edit with. At this cost, I would much rather invest in a used Canon C500 Mark II for about $7,500, get that 6K full frame sensor, but it downscales to other resolutions, gives me super high quality compressed recording codecs at much smaller file sizes, has a monitor that is conveniently located, two size full-size XLR ports, up to 10 stops of internal ND, and an optional EVF. To me, that's far and away the better camera, and Canon's RAW and RAW light codecs and color science are nearly on par with Blackmagic RAW. And I bet you, over the course of two or three years, you will have spent far more money on the Pixis 6K, which starts at $3,000, than you will on the C500 Mark II, which starts used on eBay for $7,500. The Pixis just has that much hidden cost in it. To me, it's exciting at first, but will prove to be incredibly frustrating when you spend a little time with it. I'm just not hyped with the Pixis 6K. Sorry to pop your excitement bubble. I do hope this video was helpful for you because though I won't be seeing you in the next one, you're sure to see me rough.